Okay. So we talked about the kingdoms. And talked about the plant kingdom, protist kingdom, bacteria, fungi, archaea. The last kingdom we didn't talk about is animals. So if we think back to these terms we were using, animals, are the, what is the word we're going to use for the number of cells? They're multicellular, correct, Kate. They are made of many cells. Animals have many cells. Do the cells in animals have a nucleus in them? They do, correct. So we call that eukaryotic. The eukaryotes do have a nucleus. You do have a nucleus. What about how do they get food? They have to eat things. What's the word we use? I don't kill anything right there. Only plants. Heterotroph. I'm a vegetarian. Heterotrophs. They have to eat other organisms to get energy. The cells of animals don't have any cell wall. They're surrounded just by a membrane. And mostly they reproduce sexually. The two parents combine genetic material to make the offspring. <clears throat> Most animals are organisms that move around. The term for that is motile, but there are some that are sessile. They're stuck in one place, kind of. Things like a sponge or barnacles, coral, they don't really move around. And when we look at the animal groups, we'll talk about some of their characteristics. So here are the different phylum of animals. And you can see it's a wide range from, you know, a lizard or a human or a dog is in this group of chordates all the way down to sponges, which you may think like that doesn't even, that's an animal. Um, it is. And so we can see sort of the evolution of these different groups over time using this um, evolutionary tree. So let's talk about some of them because they're interesting. I don't know that, I think there's not really hardly anything for you to write here. What are these things? What's that? It's a sponge. A sponge, you know, if you buy like a natural sponge, I don't know where you buy something like that at like the fancy bath store or something. Um, that's actually the skeleton of an animal that was once alive. Sponge, not a, like a rectangular sponge you probably have in your kitchen. That's just a, a, ma a fake sponge, right? It's just foam with holes in it. But there are real sponges that you can get. Um, and what they are is they stay attached to the bottom of the ocean and they kind of suck water in through all those little holes and openings. And as the water's coming in, they filter out little bits of food from it, bacteria or tiny little plants or animals. And that's how they get their nutrition. They have unique shapes. They don't have any symmetry. That's something we call a filter feeder. We're going to talk about a few different types of animals that are filter feeders. Um, and they're very simple, but they are animals. They have all the characteristics of animals. Remember looking at these in seventh grade, maybe? This little animal, it's, mic it's not microscopic, but it's really small. They have tentacles. That's called a hydra. It's in this next group we call Nidarians, which are interesting. They have tentacles, typically, that have stinging cells. They like these sea anemones, like a jellyfish. And on the tentacles of these animals, there are these small little cells that basically like shoot a little dagger into their prey's body, and that can um, immobilize them, stun them, kill them. In humans, it can cause a lot of pain. Anyone ever been stung by a jellyfish? 
you ever been to the ocean, you, they're, it's painful. Um, these are animals. They, these jellyfish can sort of float through the water. They have these tentacles hanging down that they can use to, to capture their prey. These are flatworms, platyhelminthes. This includes, um, these are worms, they only have one body opening. So basically their mouth and their um, anus are the same. So they take food in through their mouth and then any waste comes back out of their mouth. Yeah. Lots of these are parasites. So have you heard of a tapeworm before? Tapeworms? Um, what's that? Well, this is a, I'm sorry, that was the next group. This is a tapeworm. Um, and tapeworms are intestinal parasites often. If you get infected with a tapeworm, it lives in your stomach or intestine. And then as you eat food, the tapeworm absorbs that food. And then they reproduce inside of you and they can become so numerous that they clog up your intestine. Um, dogs get tapeworms sometimes. I remember our dog, when I first got the, I never had a dog when I was a kid, but when we first moved to New Hartford and I got a dog as an adult, when I took her in the backyard, she was going to the bathroom. And when she went to the bathroom, I looked down and there's a tiny little white thing moving around on the little pile she left. And I knew she had a tapeworm because each of these little sections, see how it's made of sections, if they break off, Let's say another dog came around where my dog went to the bathroom and was like sniffing around and it ingested this tapeworm, it would then be infected. And that's how these worms can spread from one animal to another. So he just took her to the doctor, they gave her a pill and basically it kills all the worms. There's other flatworms that are not parasites like this fluke, this colorful fluke that lives in the ocean. This is a planaria. So there are some that um, are not parasites. This is another type of worm. These are called nematodes, roundworms. These are some of these are parasites. Does anyone have a pet a dog? Pet dog, you might have to give them a little pill once every three months. Called heart guard. It's a little brown, little looks like a snack. That pill is actually to prevent this worm on the top. So this is, all this white stuff that looks like yarn is actually a roundworm that affects dogs. And this worm is a parasite, but instead of being in the intestine, it goes into the heart in the circulatory system of the dog and it feeds off of their blood. And as it grows, it can obviously clog up their heart so they can't move blood around anymore. It can be fatal for a dog. And that medicine you give a dog once every three months prevents this parasite. This one on the bottom is another parasitic roundworm. This is um, a roundworm called Ascaris. It's sometimes found in pigs. The eggs of this parasite can be in pork. Um, and if it's not cooked properly, those eggs can spread to humans even. And, it, and they hatch into these roundworms, which live in the intestine and can be deadly. Because as they grow, this is a person's intestine this red thing, it's all filled up with these worms. So this is another parasite. This annelids are segmented worms, which I'm sure you're familiar with because it includes earthworms. Earthworms are an animal. They're a segmented worm. What's that? You can use them to fish. They have two body openings. They have a mouth, they eat, they swallow soil, they digest nutrients, plants, little stuff from the soil, and then it, the waste comes out. You ever see these little piles of, looks like dirt on the top of the soil, and you might smush them in your hands and they disintegrate or throw them at your brother, stuff like that. You ever seen these little, they're all like little round clusters? It's not really mud. It's actually earthworm poop. That's what those little piles are. So um, they're actually really good for the soil. Um, yeah, they're called earthworm castings. 
You actually buy earthworms online and they'll send them to you in a big bag and you can put them in your garden because they help aerate the soil and break down um, organic material to nutrients so they're good for your garden. There's another segmented worm. You know what that is? That's a leech. Leeches sometimes live in fresh water. They um, can bite animals and basically um, make a meal of their blood. And they basically, this is a sucker that kind of attaches to an animal, could attach to a human, but typically frogs and amphibians, other things. And then at the head end, which is this end, they have a little mouth that they bite into the animal, drink a bunch of its blood so they're big and bloated, and then they fall off and they go digest that blood. And that's their, that's what they eat. Mollusks might be something you're familiar with because lots of them are things that people eat. Mollusks are soft-bodied animals, but sometimes they have a shell around them. Usually, they live in the water, usually. Um, they have gills, so they can get oxygen out of the water. And they include things like the squid, octopus. Um, you saw these at the beginning of the year, slugs. Clams, snails, all those are different types of mollusks. Anybody ever eaten any of these things? Not clams? Squid? Calamari? Ever have calamari? Octopus? No? All right. Someday maybe you will. Then we have the group arthropods. This is a huge group. It includes tons of different things. Group insects. Arachnids, centipedes, millipedes, crustaceans, all of those things are in this group called arthropods. This is the biggest group of all. They have an exoskeleton. And um, they have jointed appendages. Some of them fly, some of them walk, some of them crawl through the ground. Um, so there's insects, they have six legs. There are arachnids, which have eight legs each. There's crustaceans, which have 10. And then there's centipedes and millipedes, which have more than 10. Which one's the centipede? This one? No, that's a millipede. That's, that's the centipede. Centipedes have one leg on each body section. Millipedes have two on each, two pairs on each one. And then ever eaten any of these arthropods? Lobster? Crayfish? Yeah. Shrimp? Yeah. Crab? So people eat, lots of times people eat crustaceans. Do people eat insects? Yeah. Um, some people say that insect protein is going to be like the wave of the future. Because insects, if you crush them up, you can use the, their bodies as like flour and baking and things. They're high, very high in protein, they're inexpensive, they don't take a lot of resources to grow. So they're actually an important source of protein in many cultures. Any of these things look familiar? Starfish, sand dollar, yep. These are things you find if you go to the beach sometimes. They're called echinoderms. And this is a, a sea urchin with the spikes, a starfish, and a sand dollar. They have radial symmetry. They're organized in a circular pattern. Your question, Isaiah? Oh, a, a sea urchin? Well, in, like a, a dead one? Yep. Where'd you find it? Were you at the beach somewhere? Yeah. Yeah, yeah they're found on all over. Like, anytime you go to the beach, you might find a. Yes, true. And lots of times you might find, like, these sand dollars at, like, a shell store or something. That's when it's alive. When it's dead, it gets bleached white. And 
they're sort of like this, they come in various sizes. Yeah, they lose their color sometimes. And now we get to our last group. Chordates. These are the animals that have a spinal cord. Most of them we call vertebrates. Okay? And so these are things you're definitely familiar with. Maybe not that. These are these are chordates without a backbone. They were the ant, they were uh, some of the most the simplest of um, chordates. But the main groups are fish, amphibians, birds, reptiles, and mammals. Oh, what happened? So fish, reptiles, amphibians, birds, and mammals. Yeah, that's pretty. This, this is a um, sea squirt, it's called. It's like the most primitive um, chordate. And scientists think that maybe this was similar to the ancestor to all vertebrates, looked something like this. Um, but these have no bones. All the other vertebrates have bones, but these tunicates and lancets uh, don't. Yeah, that's a tree frog, yep. So that's kind of an overview of all the different groups of living things. Um, you're not going to have to like answer questions about all their characteristics, but I just want to take a few minutes and talk about some of those because they're kind of interesting. All right.